Street and Racing Technology. Previously known as Team Viper, this was Dodge's dedicated performance division, and anything with that badge was far from being tame. SRT early years encompassed a broad range of models, from a turbocharged compact sedan that rivaled the Japanese competition, a V10 powered truck that broke a world record, and a supercar called the Viper SRT10. Today, however, SRT is known for one thing, V8s, and very big V8s. So why are the SRT V8 so legendary? So we gotta go back to the first SRT V8 called the 6.1 liter Hemi. So the 6.1 Hemi debuted in the 2005 Chrysler 300 SRT8 with 425 horsepower and 420 pound feet of torque. Effectively, the 6.1 was a 5.7 Hemi bored over three and a half millimeters, forged crankshaft and higher compression, a more aggressive camshaft and cylinder heads that flowed superior to the 5.7 before the Eagle variant. It was a factory hot rod at 5.7 Hemi that when compared to competition in 2005 was pretty stout. The equivalent GM LS2 6 liter was down by 25 horsepower. Now GM has always put very mild camshafts in their performance line. So the 25 horsepower difference makes a lot of sense when you look back. Also the head flow is pretty insane for the time. 331 CFM factory and a larger intake than exhaust valve than the 5.7 Hemi and the 6 liter LS2. As time has gone on, the 6.1 has really proven to be very unproblematic. You don't really have the more complicated systems of the newer SRT engines. You don't have multi-displacement system or MDS. You don't also have variable valve timing. Now where the 6.1 comes up short is from a factory setting, the 6.1 Hemis do not like boost. They have a very tight tolerance when it comes to the compression ring on the pistons. And when you boost these engines, you create a lot of cylinder pressure and heat. And essentially you close that ring gap to the point where it breaks the piston. If you want to boost your 6.1, it's highly recommended that you go with some forged pistons with the correct ring gap. And since 6.1 Hemis have a factory forged crankshaft, you should be able to make as much power as that NAG1 transmission will be able to handle. So how do you improve on greatness? You make it bigger, a lot bigger. In 2011, you saw the introduction of the 392 Apache V8, or more popularly known as the Scat Pack motor. The 392 had a larger bore and stroke than the 6.1 and essentially was a bored and stroke 5.7 Eagle Hemi. The larger bore allowed larger 2.14 inch intake valves and with the revised heads produced 340 CFM. The 392 ditched the aluminum intake manifold of the 6.1 for a dual path intake runner and introduced variable cam timing. This made a much more efficient engine throughout the power band Automatic equipped 392s also got cylinder deactivation known as MDS, similar to GM's displacement on demand. And they put this engine in everything. <laughs> When you compare similar engines like the 392 Hemi and the 6.2 LT1, you obviously see that the 392 has the horsepower advantage. It's running a much more aggressive camshaft, typical GM, usually running much more milder camshafts than their performance engines. Now, that av advantage of power starts to stop whenever you factor in the 392 is a heavier engine, and the 6.2 LT1 came in much lighter vehicles like the 6 Gen SS and the Stingray. So even though the 392 Hemi made more power, it's not always translated as in gas Camaros and, and Corvettes. This leads to some downsides of the 392. Just like the 6.1, these engines do not like boost from the factory. If you compare a 6.4 liter piston to an aftermarket, let's say forge piston, you can see that these forge pistons have much thicker ring lands and the factory 6.4 pistons run a tighter ring tolerance on the compression ring. So when you add boost, which is gonna be higher cylinder pressures and more heat, you're gonna run into the issue of tightening, tightening that ring tolerance to the point where it's gonna crack that piston and now you have a 392 cubic inch paperweight. Now, when you want to make even more power, you actually go smaller. In 2015, SRT engineers introduced the 6.2 liter Hemi. This retained the 392 Hemi's 4.09 inch bore, but used the 5.7 Hemi 3.578 inch stroke length for a 6.2 liter total displacement. This was complemented by a 2.4 liter IHI supercharger making 11.6 pounds of boost, Factory forged pistons to withstand the immense cylinder pressures and compression is lowered down in 9.5 to 1. 
The 6.2 Hemi heads ditch the 319 alloy construction for T6 aluminum and valves are sodium filled for the exhaust and hollow stem for the intake. In base form, the 6.2 Hemi produces 707 horsepower, while the Red Eye and Demon and Superstock use a 2.7 liter supercharger and 14.5 pounds of boost to create between 797 and 840 horsepower depending on fuel and tune. Now, when we compare the Hellcat engine to a competitor push ride supercharged V8, the LT4, you can see that the Hellcat engine it runs a much more aggressive camshaft, has lower compression, but it has a larger blower pushing larger PSI. If you look at the LT4, the cam specs are a little bit more mild, runs higher compression because it's a direct injection setup, but it also has a much smaller blower pushing much smaller boost. So that's the discrepancy you see with power. Now we can argue the LT5 that came in the C7ZR1, and then you can always pull the card of the Dodge Demon with 840 horsepower. I don't think really looking for the most horsepower is really gonna really make this make sense. I would think what makes sense more is that the LT4 is a little bit more refined when it comes to direct injection. It's an aluminum block, it's lighter. It came in the Corvette. The Corvette is a handling machine. So rather than looking at this just purely in the power perspective, you can see these engines are built for two different purposes. One engine is built just to be a power machine to do straight line speed. And another one is built for dry sump oiling and being able to go around a racetrack. Now, are there any downsides to the 6.2 liter Hemi? Well, the 6.2 Hemis don't have MDS or multi-displacement system. They still retain variable valve timing, which is actually good when it comes into low end power and mid range power. Now, the biggest downside is gonna be obviously price. You're not gonna get into Hellcats for any type of discount. They're very sought after vehicles and you're gonna have to pay a premium for it. And I think the best part of all, just like LSs and Coyotes, Gen 3 Hemis are just like Legos. So if you wanted to build a budget setup, let's say you had a 5.7 Hemi, you can always throw some forged pistons in there, forged connecting rods, and throw a Hellcat supercharger on top. Hellcat superchargers are very easy to come by because a lot of Hellcat guys and gals, they upgrade into three liter Whipples or go twin turbo and they sell the blower to compensate with the cost. So if you can grab one of those and get a, let's say a MMX um, conversion kit where you get the adapter plates and get the front drive set up, you can convert your very basic 5.7 Hemi that a lot of people don't really take a second look at, and you can turn it into a potential budget Hellcat. You have to remember that the 5.7 Hemis have the same transmission that is in the 6.4 um, Scat Pack, the 8HP70. So it, it's one of those things that even if you're in the market to not necessarily spend a lot of money, but you still want to have some cool shit, you can always do that with Hemis as well. You don't really sacrifice anything. Now, Hemis do on average cost much more than these junkyard LSs that you see. So you're going to pay a premium, but not necessarily is it something radical like BMWs and Mercedes. Now, if you guys have any more ideas on engines you want me to cover, put it in the link in the description below. Follow me on Instagram, uh, 337speed. Hey, we've got more videos on the way. Thank you guys for supporting the channel. Peace.